to try to secure a large portion of my winter's firewood right now in the middle of summer. The last year, I got about three to four quarts of firewood. I'm thinking that I can uh, change some techniques up and switch some things up this year and get at least twice that much. For Jesse Holmes, staying ahead of the seasons is key to his lifestyle in Ninana. After building a raft to haul firewood before winter, Jesse will now head out to harvest the resource. But first, he must load a vital yet heavy piece of equipment. I want to bring the four-wheeler with me because there's places where I can save my back if I got this four-wheeler and I can let it do all the work. The whole thing is I want to get more wood, but I want to use less of my youth that's fading quickly. Yes, are you helping me? This is going to be the first time I've ever put a four-wheeler in the boat, and I know it's possible, but i just never done it before. i got some boards, some plywood. With that, I should be able to make a rough ramp that I can put together and take apart really easily. Now this is starting to look like something that's a little dangerous, but not too dangerous. The one thing that makes this kind of sketchy to get on here is that my brakes don't work good on this four-wheeler. I'm going to have to kind of um, roll into a stop. I got the four-wheeler in. That's pretty cool seeing that in there. As long as I can get it out, I can do some damage with that thing. The only thing to stop me from coming uh, home with anything is the amount of work I'm willing to put in. So I'm willing to put the work in. I think I'm going to come back with a nice load of logs. Load up. Come on, Tim. Load up. Yay, you brought your ball. Yay, we're gone. We got a long ways to go, girls. We got a lot to do. We're out of here. I want to live 60 mile an hour with flames coming out of my hair till the day I'm not here, but that takes planning. What I'm doing out here today is looking for a place to start a new safety trail in case something bad ever happens at Kavik and I have to get away. With the work that's happening on the North Slope, it's only 15 miles from camp to one of the oil fields. If a 50 year old fat chick comes in, help me, they're gonna help me. With 15 miles, I estimate three barrels. Every five miles, I drop a barrel in that container. You have a tent, you have a source of heat, a source to cook, dehydrated food, you've got the basic elements to keep yourself alive and go the next five months. It's sort of like leaving yourself breadcrumbs so that you can breadcrumb safety your way somewhere. I'm going to get on the chest waders, go down the river. I have a coal seam down there and that's going to be my source of heat to pack in the barrels. Over here, that's the area I had gone that had my coal seam, but it's buried. Just before seven o'clock this morning, we had a 6.5 earthquake. That was a really good tumbler. Where that dark mud is, that's an area that let go. So you got some instability happening. So I'm gonna look before I leave. Even if I saw coal right there, that, that's too unstable. I see water running down it now. I'm not interested. I wanna get the coal, but I don't wanna get it so bad that I end my life. So I've got to be careful about where I choose. So what I'm going to be doing is looking down this whole escarpment as I'm going back down the Kavik, and I'm going to search for those dark stains coming out. That's going to tell me there's coal in there. Bearing in mind, once I find it, I've got to cross the river, cross the current. Doesn't seem silly to go and risk my life to get a little bit of coal that I might need. Well, it's only as silly as that moment that you do need it and didn't decide to do that. So, it's a 
a sunny day. Let's see what I can see. Just accomplishing things really keeps me alive and keeps my culture alive because it's use it or lose it. I'll get this up here on the table and look it over real well. I want to do some fishing today. We go to Wild has spent several days with his son Skylar and daughter Scarlet in the Huslia wilderness, showing them the Athabascan way of life. Now that his kids have returned home, Rico must head out for a seasonal harvest and secure resources for himself. There's a lot of fish right now in the water, and the water is low, so it's not too hard to get at them. I'm going to use a fish net. There's pike, there's whitefish, there's grayling, there's salmon. I'll be fishing for food and also for trapping bait. This net looks real good. I'm going to use this for the salmon. In addition to the longer, larger net that I have for salmon, I may use an older traditional net that my mom had made out of twine. It's specifically for grayling and smaller fish. This net's a little more harder to manage because it's such small, light mesh. Took her probably a good two weeks. It's some kind of art that I wish I knew because it's basically a strong tool of survival. It looks like it's in perfect condition. I'm gonna head down to the boat and head down to the slough. My mom was like number one for fishing. She taught me everything I know. So if I fail at putting fish on the table, then I guess I'm just not soaking up the knowledge. No better day than this to get out on the water. If you want to have good luck, there's two things you need. You need to be prepared, and then you need an opportunity. Just a new boat in Kotzebue, 55 miles from their summer home in Kiwalik. Today they're returning to camp, but a broken motor has stalled the journey. With a storm approaching, finding a way to get on the water before nightfall is crucial. I'm having a lot of troubles with this eight horsepower. I've had these kind of problems before with other machines. I can see that I can solve this problem. What I can't solve is the weather that's coming. We'll drive down there. It might take us six or eight hours, but we've got to get there before the blow, and then I can fix the motor. Push me out and let's see if we're balanced. Oh yeah, that'll be good. What do you think, huh? Yeah, <laughs> that simplifies everything. Can't the, get the boat and motor to start? Throw me in a bigger boat. <laughs> loves in life is a little bit of challenge. Life with no challenge is just boring. We're going 30 miles up river. My search to find some logs. It's the most weight I ever had in the boat, so definitely gonna have to take it nice and easy and see how that handles. Definitely don't want to make any kind of mistakes when you're out there with a load like this. Mistakes when you got a load like this are life and death type deal. So main thing is to be safe and take my time getting up there.
Tanana River is just a wild braided river. There's lots of sandbars, gravel bars, and the river is constantly changing and depositing new sandbars in places. The river's been dropping real quick. Wasn't quite paying attention to the water. Pound stuck on a sandbar. Thousands of pounds in the boat. It's not a very good situation to be in. With this much weight in the boat. You gotta get out in the water. And you gotta work and pry and pull and push. And you gotta physically try to lift that boat up and shoot it an inch at a time. The boat's moving. It looks like I'm gonna be able to get out. There, I'm starting to get some more flotation. Keep working it this way. I'm starting to feel a little bit of current here. Oh yeah, I'm in some deep water now. That's not what I wanted to have happen. I'm out and that's what matters. Ah, I'm a little bit tired now though. I'm gonna keep going up river, keep my eyes out really good reading the water because I can't afford another mistake like that. It's really dangerous when I'm gonna be coming down here with a big giant raft loaded with thousands of pounds of wood on it. If I get that stuck on something like that, I ain't getting it off. You can't take shortcuts, you can't take any risk when it's low water like this. There ain't no amount of wood I can put on that raft that's worth my life. I'm about 20 miles up the river. I'm getting up here, starting to see some dead trees. Oh man, there is a lot of firewood right there. Oh yeah, there's a mother load of wood back here. Main thing I gotta do now is get this four wheeler off. the boat I'm gonna go up and retrieve my raft it's about 10 more miles up hook up to the raft bring it back down here then I'm gonna get started logging go big adventure yeah we're on a big adventure I'm Alaska's people I don't have no ownership of Alaska but Alaska owns my heart that's for sure The name of the game today is get as many fish as I can, as quick as I can. I got a big net with me today. I'm gonna put that at the mouth of the slough and basically going after chum salmon. And I got this smaller net. I wanna get that back in the slough away from the spawning salmon and hopefully get some more edible, smaller fish. There's a lot of opportunity in the water right now and I wanna take advantage of it. looking around for a good spots for putting a fish net in. I don't want to find a place with too much weeds. I want to have some depth to it. Oh, Got a hot water signal coming on. Maybe weeds, I don't know. I'm gonna check it out. Out here, there's no mechanics. I can't bring this motor into anyone to have it fixed. And I'm a long ways, 100 miles from the village. So hopefully it's nothing major. Going back here in the slough, I got this stuff here. Hopefully it didn't suck any of this into the water cooling system. So I gotta see if this thing will run without the bells going off. Problem solved so far. I'm glad because I don't wanna be broke down back in this slough. This is my only way home.
This is a slough here that we used to fish when I was growing up. I'm thinking maybe put a post in here and just string that net out here for some chum and maybe get some bigger pike. And then put the smaller net up in the slough a little ways and hopefully get something. I don't have no one to help me today, so I just gotta work a little harder. I just wanna get this down deep enough to where it doesn't come out. I don't wanna lose my net. Get another stake in just to be safe. I'm just gonna paddle out and let this net spool out. I'm gonna let the current kind of do most of the work. This looks good so far. Oh, I'm hung up right here. Ah, there we go. Okay, I'll pull it out just a little bit, just like that. That should be good. I let it set. I'm gonna put the other net in. Okay, that's good. Let's turn this off. You can see it's already tangling. It's a little bit harder to set because it's uh, old fashioned stuff here. Okay, it looks pretty good. Just want to pull this tight. Okay. I'm gonna let this net just sit here. The other one is doing his job. And hopefully when I get back and check him, I'll have something in them. There's nothing about me that says I'm qualified to do what I do. I'm just fearless about doing it. I definitely see an area of interest right here, and it looks like it might be pretty good. But the only thing that doesn't look good is how to get across the river. In case an emergency forces her to leave Kavik, Sue will build a 15-mile safety trail to the Hall Road. Harvesting coal from the riverbank is key, as it will provide a heat source to place in the safety barrels. I got clear water here, and then it gets a real greenish color. That's, a, that's deep. I'm a little nervous about it, to be honest. If I slip, I'll just be one of the rocks down here in the bottom of the river. Cavic will swallow me whole. So I've got to be careful. Normally when you cross a river, you want to do your toes pointed into the current. So I'm going to kind of head that way. If the current gets really strong, I'm going to have to change my tack. But I'm using the shovel as sort of a walking stick. The current is definitely picking up. It is really pushing on me. I don't know about this. I'm gonna try to go further down and up. The nature of the current is trying to push me to the southwest. So I'm gonna work with nature rather than trying to force nature to my will. Whenever I try to do that, it doesn't work out. So I'm going to say, right, Mother Nature, I'm just going to take the tack you're offering. Treat me nice. This bucket is a big pain in my pants. Ah! No, you're not going to win. Turn around, turn around. Ah! Come on, come on. 
Amazon, come on! Ah! Get it! station. This is exactly, exactly what I want. This is really a, an exciting coal find. It's not a lump of coal that you're going to take a match to. This is something I'll have to form, but it's very oil rich. I think if I get one good bucket, that's enough for me to start setting up the three barrels. that river. You know, the goal is actually that I never have to use it. But if I do or somebody else, it's there. And all it did was a day of effort and maybe getting a little bit wet. Hell, maybe I needed a bath. <laughs> it's a good day, a monumental effort, and a monumental payout. I'm always pushing barriers in everything I do because it keeps me strong and keeps me moving forward. Jesse has traveled up river to retrieve his raft, which will allow him to haul firewood for the coming winter. But his success will hinge on how the raft can handle the load. And today, he'll put it to the test. This is it. We're off. Maiden voyage. Onward we go. It's swinging good. Feel like I got good control. It's a big raft, though. My adrenaline's definitely pumping. I got plenty of power. I'm cruising at 2100 RPM and moving along nicely. You have to be on guard when you're doing something like this. You can't lose attention. And I'm right above my spot here. You can land this raft real good. And I can uh, start skidding out some logs. I'm looking forward to loading this raft up. 
it's going to start coming together fast. I got my four wheeler here, and that's uh, the best way I've ever moved logs. Once I get back a little further, there's just a mother load of firewood back there. Okay, looks like time to get to work right away here. themselves. That's how life should be. You should rely on yourself. are traveling back to their camp in Kiwalik, but motor problems with the vessel and a storm overhead forced them to haul the new boat instead of driving it back. And now, they're traveling with a dangerously heavy load. I'm glad we left Cossabue when we did and gave up on the boat motor and just threw it in. Yeah. Well, we're not there yet, dear. I know, right? Where the Shamiso Islands are at the end of Shores Peninsula, there's three different currents that converge there. And that's a dangerous place. But there's two times when it's usually pretty mellow. One is high tide, one is low tide. But unfortunately, low tide right now is right before dark. So it's kind of a race towards dark to get down there. And then just driving around the dark is a dangerous thing. Like a mile more to go to shore. Yeah, mile? I guess I have one 
crew. When the river meets the sea, there's always sandbars out from where the river would be. And at the very lowest tides, those sandbars are all exposed. It got dark, and when it was dark, we couldn't see the sandbars anymore. And when you can't see the sandbar to find the channel, sometimes you get stuck on them. You're not moving. No, I'm not. We just got to try to get out of the sandbar before the water, the tide goes lower, and then we get stuck on the sandbar overnight. This much, look. Look. Look at what? This deep. Okay. The water's still going down and we're still stuck. Well, we might be here for the night. The water's still going down and we're still stuck. Yeah, the water's just getting lower. We're on our keel now. If the tide goes down another six inches, we're going to be standing on dry ground. Yeah. So let's throw the anchor, and that way when the tide comes up, we won't drift out to sea. If I get my sleep now tonight, we got all day tomorrow ahead of us, and we can just motor around. So we'll call this the hotel, and uh, we'll get some room service here. We just do things like maybe take out the kayak and take out the boat. We can make some more room in here. What we basically do is just sit it up on top of the sandbar. I know I'm not very far away from the spit, and I'm, I'm just going to call it a night. Can you try the rope to it? Yep. In the dark. You don't take chances. Once you're in a safe place, just stick it out. We've got darkness again. <laughs> and that's pretty cool because we've had, you know, 24-hour sunlight for quite a long time. The very first, uh, the very first real dark is pretty interesting. Kind of catches you by surprise. When the tide comes back up, we'll get off the sandbar and carry on. There's nothing else we can really do. Tide and time wait for no man. We survive by working with the land. And that's all about native culture right there. The net's been sitting for a few hours just soaking. Hopefully I got some fish. Hopefully get a few to put away for the winter. Maybe some for a trapping bait and also some to eat tonight. I'm gonna check this bigger net first. I do see the floaters bobbing, so hopefully that's not a stick, and hopefully we got some fish in here. Usually a good sign when you see the floaters bobbing like that. Pull it up from the bottom. I'm not seeing anything here in the net. I do feel some weight. Oh, there's something in here. Oh, yeah, I got some chum here. All right, I got some nice-looking chum salmon here. These are good for bait. Oh, I got a nice fish here. This is white fish. These right here are good eating fish. The stomach is real good on them. Some people might think twice about eating fish stomach, but us natives, we know what we're doing out here, and white fish is real good. Oh, what do we have here? This is a huge pike right here. Oh, monster. It's got some huge teeth, huge mouth. It's basically like the Alaskan alligator monster i for sure see a few meals out of this guy he's big i'm more than happy this thing has done his job i'm gonna eat good tonight this is the last net here and uh this is the one my late mom made so i'm hoping to replicate the success it's had in the past it's over 30 years old Ooh, nice big pike right here it's kind of cool to use this old net my late mom made. Really brings me back because she was a beautiful lady and she worked real hard to keep us fed. This is the same slough that I was raised up on, eating from this water. And I too am a parent now, so I can only hope that my kids can do this, maybe use some of the tools and the knowledge that I taught them. So for me to be able to come back here, I'm sure my mother, wherever she at, She's probably smiling down on me, and maybe that's how I have luck today, you know. Both nets did their job. I was able to get a lot of fish. There's some I'm going to eat tonight. I'm going to smoke some in my smokehouse, and I got some I'm going to put away, store it for winter trapping bait. So it was a mission accomplished today. I was able to get out here, back to my roots, and use some of the old tools my late mom had left me. Eating good like this, it's like she proved herself on this earth. best to play it safe when you're out in the wilderness. For me, that's showing respect to the land right there, having a healthy fear of it. I've got all the logs down 
here I'm needing, so hopefully in a couple hours I'll be ready to break camp and start heading down river with my uh, payload. Time to roll up the old sleeves and get dog dirty on it. This is the most wood I've ever gotten myself in one load. This is a great accomplishment for me to get this much wood in one go. It's also really great because I know that this is working for me and this is something I can improve on every year. This raft is just floating high for all this weight that's on it. I was just trying to do twice as good as I did last year and it looks like I'm going to do five or six times better. Definitely going to feel like I did something today. Sleep's a lot better when you earn it. I've had all summer, I think. Doing things that are adventurous that I've never done before, trying things, bettering things. It's fun when you see your ideas come together and they work out good. The hell of a load. Okay, right, getting down the last of the firewood here. Gonna try to load the four wheeler on. It's pretty sunk under there. Having never done something this big, I don't really quite know what to expect. The raft is starting to sink down. It looks like both layers of logs are underwater now. The four wheeler weighs quite a bit, so it's starting to make me nervous. Looking pretty sketchy for putting a four wheeler on. because it's a lot of weight. Oh, I gotta stay clean away from those cut banks. If I get too close, I can't push out quick enough. So I just really had to make sure I make no mistakes. One mile at a time, a good decision to get me home with this. Always feel like a lucky man to be out on the river, especially when I'm out here getting a lot of work done, securing my winter's worth of firewood. A couple grueling days of hard work, rewarded by a beautiful sunset. You just can't beat the office that I'm working in right now. This is a great job to have. There's a lot of dangers out here. It's not just me and my children anymore. It's grandkids and everybody. So we try to do things the safe way. sandbar and were unable to find deeper waters. They were forced to hunker down until the return of daylight and high tide. Today, they'll look to find the channel to guide them back to camp. Oh yeah, we're floating free with the tide up. This tide coming up like this will help us get right to the mouth of the river. 
So I think maybe it'll be our best bet if we leave the boats trailing behind us when we just chug. You really don't have any choice but to wait for daylight and high tide. And we did it, and that's what we had to do, and we'd do it again if we were ever in that situation again. We waited out, the tide came, the boat got floating, we went boating. See, look, here's the channel, 300 yards away. <laughs> maybe five. But you see the middle of the night? It all looks okay. There's no getting over that stuff. With the high tide, we can just drive right across the lagoon and find the mouth to the river and proceed upriver. We're almost there. We've got another mile and a half to go, and we'll waddle up the river and see what we can do. Oh, look. Ooh. Now there's a bunch of ducks. It's a swarm. <laughs> oh, man, that's a lot of ducks. That's probably a good thousand birds, a couple thousand birds. A whole bunch of ducks. Ah. Welcome to us back to Kewalik. Oh, we'll be eating birds then, won't we? I was just thinking, I guess that's what's for dinner. <laughs> you know, this place is just full of wildlife. There's seals, there's birds, there's caribou, there's moose, there's musk ox, there's walrus. There's everything you can possibly want going in and out of the ocean, the lagoon, and into the river and off the tundra. So having a small boat and having a kayak is an excellent way to access those things. Look ahead of us. That's a big seal. Ooh. Oh, yeah, oogles shack. That's a good 400-pounder. Welcome home to Key Wallet, huh? Yeah. We leave for a little bit, we come back, and it's replenished. <laughs> this is always an excellent place to be. There's everything we want. It's the Key Wallet. That's why we're here. We made it. Oh, there we go. Now we're back in the key wallet once again. To be here, you must be brutally honest with yourself. Ask the important questions and be honest. <laughs> Alrighty. Today I'm gonna try to get everything set and done and get my little buckets filled. One of the biggest elements is the coal bricks that I made and I put it into these cans but this can is also going to serve as a stove. This will burn for quite a long time once you get it going. Got my coal bricks. I have dry clothes, bedroll, sleeping pad. You've got matches and a lighter, caribou jerky, willow and stevia tea that I made. The barrel is designed to sustain, if you're careful, you're going to sustain life for a week or so. If you're going to eat like a porker, probably three days. You've got flares, medical survival kit. You can't help an emergency when it happens sometimes. It is a comfort to know that these things are out there. Whether I need it or not, the goal is never to use it. The goal is to be safe where I'm at and not be needing it. But if you do, it's good to have. The first one from camp is going to be on top of Sand Hill. Why? It's the largest thing that I can see. I know exactly where it is. I can find it in the dark. It's the tallest thing out here going north. This is going to be my first barrel drop. Lone little bush here. It's uh, at the top of the first hill. It's by itself so it stands out. There's plenty of branch work for me to flag, so I'm going to see it. So let's unlock and unload. One of the other side thoughts about why do I pick this kind of a spot, the willow. Edible, I can make tea. I can use the bark. So I've got medicinal and food qualities to this. I've also got sphagnum moss down here. If I'm injured, it's antibacterial, antimicrobial bandage. So the place that anyone picks for putting their survival barrels, even the tree you attach it to should have some form and function. Most hunters, most people that are out in the woods, the wild, whatever, if you see a bush or a tree and there's tons of flagging all over it, there's generally a reason. The goal is to catch a person's attention. Anybody in need can definitely use it. So it's not just me, although that's my focus is myself. 
what if I have my grandkid here and there's trouble? He's going to know where to go, how to get himself saved. But it's open to the public. Safety can't be segregated. Safety can't be something you sell. Safety has to be available for everybody. So that's why I make it easy. Again, maybe it's my lighthouse complex. <laughs> it's a little beacon for people to utilize if they need it. That you're going to see from a long ways away. Good job, Sue. Hello, xin chào các bạn nha. Đây là cây nhót nhà mình ạ. À. Cây rất là to. Nó làm rất là rộng rồi các bạn ạ. À. Cây này phải đến Tết mới có quả các bạn nha. Đến Tết là có quả ăn được. Tết là ăn cút non đấy ạ. Các bạn hay thường ăn cốt nhốt non cuộn với cả lá, lá rau cải ấy. Rồi chấm cái nước chấm của nó ăn rất là ngon Nhà mình có hai cây Nhưng mà nó lan rộng tận ra đằng kia các bạn ạ Năm nay là năm thứ ba rồi Hôm nay là nó rất là to Lan rất là rộng Ra quả thì sai lắm ạ Hầu như cành nào ngóc mép nào cũng có quả luôn <cười>